In the past few weeks, there have been quite a few responses to the channel by non-Christians and evolutionists. Well, it's wonderful to have you along for the ride. And keep those comments coming in. You sometimes stretch my mind, and that's much appreciated. Some of those comments have referred to a website called Talk Origins. I used to visit it 30-something years ago. I wanted to check out the sort of things I might face at question time after my lectures. The site was full of confident and strident claims for evolution and scorn and ridicule for anyone not believing it. But it wasn't difficult to refute what they were saying. Walter Emin joined one of their debates and wiped the floor with them. I remember someone commenting that this is the biggest hiding the Talk Origins people have ever had. Walter Amin wrote an excellent book, The Biotic Message, in which he shows that life refutes every materialistic explanation. He makes a case that life was deliberately designed as a message to mankind, so there's no excuse for denying the existence of a creator. Shortly after the Ramin debate, I abandoned Talk Origins. I was giving so many lectures all over the world, I didn't have time for it. But when comments on the channel came in referring to Talk Origins, I decided to take another look. The format of the site is a bit different, but the proud claims for evolution are much the same. Except that they now don't seem to make claims for the origin of life, and exclude it as if it had nothing to do with evolution. That's not surprising. As we saw in episode 21, Karl Popper wiped out all the origins of life stories way back in 1974. Even Harold Morowitz bailed out and started to search for new laws of thermodynamics, laws which would make a naturalistic origin of life possible. He died with absolutely no clues about those hoped-for new laws of thermodynamics. Of course, without a plausible origin of life, evolution can't start. It's dead in the water. But Talk Origins confidently assures us that they have at least 29 solid proofs for evolution. And surprise, surprise, top of the list is the evolution of man from chimpanzees. They confidently claim that lots of bits of bone have been found which fit in perfectly with chimp to man evolution. But as we saw in episode 16, the emperors of evolution have had to admit there's actually no evidence at all for man evolving from apes. It was all fraud, wishful thinking, or self-deception. Now the official story is that both apes and man must have evolved from some common ancestor. Nobody has any evidence for that common ancestor, and nobody has any idea what it might have looked like. I didn't bother looking at the remaining 28 solid proofs. But there was a very interesting set of comments about something else. I'd like to thank those of you who pointed out that some citations which have been very popular and which I've been quoting for years may be doubtful in their origin. Way back in the 1950s, when I was at school, the apes and typewriters story was a prime proof of evolution and it was said to have been used by Huxley in that great debate. Throughout the years, I've come up against this argument many times. I devised the response I mentioned in episode 53 and used it in some of my lectures. In all of those years, the only variation I heard in the story was whether it was a work of Shakespeare or a psalm that the apes had to type. In episode 54, Arthur Wilder Smith spoke at the Oxford Union where that great debate took place. He was speaking to hostile Oxford students and academics, including Richard Dawkins. Although I only gave a brief summary of the end of Wilder Smith's speech 
he described Huxley confronting and defeating Wilberforce with the apes and typewriter story. Nobody brought up any comments or objections. I would have thought that he would not get away with any inaccuracy about that debate in that setting. But some of the comments on the channel suggest that there is doubt about the whole story. For example, prototype typewriters were available at the time of the debate, but they only entered mass production a year or so after the debate. There appear to be no records of the speeches made at the debate, so the whole story could be nothing more than hearsay. Another point brought up in the comments was the famous remark from Sir Arthur Keith. Evolution is unproven and unprovable. We believe it because the only alternative, special creation, is unthinkable. This is probably the very quote about which Wilder Smith said in episode 52, I've seen those words in print. I'd always taken this as a quote from Did Man Just Happen, published in 1948. But it appears there's dispute about not only where it was first published, but even whether Arthur Keith wrote it. There are many places in the literature and on the internet where this quote is attributed to Arthur Keith but there are differences about where it was published. But anyway, whether it was Arthur Keith or someone else who first said it, and whatever publication it first appeared in, it's certainly a true statement about why evolutionists believe evolution. And as far as the Huxley-Wilberforce debate's concerned, whether the apes and typewriter story came from that debate or somewhere else, it was certainly a popular and effective argument for evolution and it's been completely wiped off the board by Arthur Wilder Smith's disproof we looked at in episode 53. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.